Hello there, my little mad lads. I'm back with the milk. I figure this video serves a couple purposes, including an introduction of myself, since fucking 38,000 of you decided to show up while I've been MIA. Hi, I'm... Madvocate... I'm... Madvocate... Madvocate... I'm Madvocate. I'm just some guy who wanted to dip his peepee -pee into cape shit film YouTube. Biggest mistake of my life. I've gotten lots of comments saying they thought this was a massive established channel based on the production quality of the videos. Flattering, but rest assured I'm a one-man army who self-taught himself video editing. I wish I could do more of it, but... Life. Anyway, that's all you need to know about me. Now for the main reason this video exists. I made a video digging into Snyder's Flash about two months ago and realized too late that it needed to remain in the oven a bit longer. I still stand by most of the criticisms made, but there are corrections and clarifications to be made since I got repeating comments and even a hilarious response video. I also wanted to remove the nitpicks I had, which were not only wrong, but I included for some reason. I imagine it was because there was obviously significant significantly less flash footage compared to each CW season, and I wanted to do like the six part thing for fun, but that's just pointless. It's just better to focus on things that are actually consequential to the plot, sequence, or characters, and I guess this needs to be said at the very beginning because a ton of people either missed or misunderstood the disclaimer at the end of the original video. Don't use third party media to justify or explain things. Darkseid actually forgot which planet had the anti-life equation on it somehow. Okay, so Zack Snyder actually answered this. <laughs> Movies and shows should stand on their own and provide all necessary information for successful cause and effect, setup and payoff. This includes two words people constantly use to explain certain criticisms I had. Speed Force. Holy shit, this is like everyone's favorite get out of jail free card for everything. So let's take a look at all the details about the Speed Force provided to us in the Snyderverse. It's like this layer of dimensional reality and it seems to manipulate space time. I call it the Speed Force. It caused me to burn a tremendous amount of calories. That's it. From this single bit of vague exposition, people have somehow understood that the Speed Force creates a protective barrier around the Speedster. It manifests itself as a barrage of lightning that interacts with the environment and is the reason the lightning doesn't touch or hurt anyone around it. I have no idea how they came to this conclusion. Oh, y you guys didn't get all of that from this line? You learned that from somewhere else? Then please stop. Now probably the biggest correction I want to make is all the times I suggested Barry use relocation to save people. I received many a comment telling me this Flash cannot relocate people because the sheer speed would kill them. He would burst through them or rip their limbs off. Now this isn't being corrected because of these comments though. I'm only correcting it because we never see this Barry save anyone via relocation in the Snyderverse. I kept showing clips from Whedon's version which wasn't fair on my part since they are different continuities. Iris was an exception, and I actually complimented that moment because Barry was being extremely gentle, only setting her down through a series of taps and not actually relocating her. However, if we apply these comments logic to the scenes where Barry body slams Captain Boomerang and the Crook, then he probably should have killed them both. But for now, I will adhere to the rule of Barry not being able to relocate simply because we are never shown if he can. Hold on, but there's quite a contradiction going on if you check out the comments on my Red Rush video. People over there are saying the reason civilians are unaffected when CW Flash relocates them is because the speed force protects them? So which the fuck is it, third party media advocates? Would the sheer speed kill civilians when relocating them, or would the speed force protect them? Pick one, damn it. The next correction is to retract what I said about Barry taking damage like a normal human would, which is silly. We have to assume he he has some degree of super durability to be able to physically withstand super speed. And we know super durability is a concept that exists in this universe. And yes, I hear all of you nerds saying, it's not super durability, the speed force protects him. And all I can say is, do I really need to pull up this clip again? It's like this layer of dimensional reality and it seems to manipulate space time. I call it the speed force. 
caused me to burn a tremendous amount of calories. The fact of the matter is, we can ask all kinds of questions about Flash since Zack left his origin completely unanswered. Was he born with these powers? Was he experimented on? Are there any other speedsters out there? Is he a humanoid alien like Clark, or does he come from gods like Diana? Is Henry actually his foster father like Pa Kent was to Clark? Maybe. Whedon did the bare minimum and established that Barry is a normal human who got these powers from chance in this tiny bonding moment with Cyborg. You got struck by lightning, huh? But even from this, we can still ask questions like why did the lightning give him powers instead of killing or crippling him? But then Barry replies with, I, yeah, that's the abridged version. I Meaning there is a lot more to this story. Perhaps the circumstances of the lightning strike were unique, and that's why Barry faced a much different fate than others who've also been struck. It ain't incredible or anything, and I will continue to die on the hill of solo movies first, team up movie later. But at least those with zero knowledge of the Flash now understand that his origin is narrowed down to a normal human who suffered an accident who possibly could have been any one of us. Oh, and now that I bring up Joss Whedon, I should mention that I got comments telling me to stop complimenting him for improving certain moments like this. Meanwhile, I also insulted him in the same video, so I don't know what you dipshits want from me. Joss Whedon is a huge cunt. He also made some improvements to certain scenes. Yes, those two things can coexist. Is that clear enough? I've seen people comment that Barry doesn't do more because he's inexperienced, but who knows how long he's already been the Flash for and how much he's done. This is obviously not his first rodeo, and these are only two moments of him subduing enemies on his own that we know of. In fact, there is even more security footage of him apart from the single one we saw, and you have to take into account all the other heroic things he's done that weren't picked up by cameras. Like I said, since we have nothing on his origin, it could be that he's had super speed his whole life. The inexperienced argument is flimsy. And might I add, one of the two enemies we see him immediately take down was someone Amanda Waller believed was worthy enough to join the Suicide Squad. Someone capable of taking on a Superman level threat. I want to build a team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. Like fight the next war, defeat the next Superman. And she clearly didn't think picking him was a mistake because he's returning in the sequel. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Captain Boomerang is essentially Captain Cold, but worse. But if we're going off of what this government official says his power level is capable of, like fight the next war, defeat the next Superman, then Barry has technically fought a big shot before. Or instead of an experienced, people say Barry can't think quick on his feet. Guys. He can literally slow time around him in this very movie and think. He fucking thinks about grabbing a hot dog because it could impress the manager in the middle of rescuing someone from death. Don't give me this he can't think bullshit. Alright, I'll go over the scenes now, starting with the first one, which is still garbage. That hasn't changed. Barry Allen's very introduction is embarrassing. <laughs> Why do his shoes explode, but the rest of his clothes don't? If you're going to tell me it's because of the friction from touching the ground, be aware that the shoes break from top to bottom. He should be butt naked by the time he's done with this, therefore fucking up his interview. In fact, how is it not fucked as is? When Barry goes into flash time, he is right in front of the hiring manager, and when real time resumes, he's outside with Iris, in the manager's field of view. He is here for about 12 seconds in real time. Then he he speeds away, back inside. Also, the broken glass falls after he speeds away, meaning it was just suspended in mid-air for 12 seconds. Also, the shoe debris is gone. What would this sequence look like if Zack had used his brain? Oh gosh, I hope everyone's okay. The manager saw that, and she has a resume with Barry's information, meaning the manager will know the Flash's real identity once he becomes a public figure. 
Yippee, but Zack tried to trick you with some garbage editing, and to fix this he'd have to go back to the drawing board or cut it out entirely. Also, what is Zack's obsession with having lightning flying fucking everywhere whenever Barry moves fast even slightly? How has he not hurt anyone or given himself away or burned holes in his clothing from producing all this shit? Ah, convenient how they miss every single person. I can't believe I'm about to use the CW show as an example of doing something better. But the lightning Barry emits in it is mostly portrayed as smaller streaks that only drag behind him and are a result of moving fast. They weren't randomly striking his surroundings and coursing around his entire body before he even fucking moves. Oh, don't you dare think I like that show or prefer it over this flash. Having Barry be extremely gentle with Iris so that that she doesn't get whiplash shows me that Zack wasn't completely devoid of logic when creating this sequence. But that's the only positive thing I can say about it that isn't purely about the spectacle. Alright, let's pretend Zack didn't fuck this up by having real time resume at two different times. Let's say after setting Iris down, he immediately went back inside. Why would he go in the pooch pen? He doesn't want to give himself away to the manager, so why would he put himself in a different spot when real time resumes? He should be back here, in this position, because as is from the manager's POV, he teleported. I need to be crystal clear because I already know someone's gonna say, well, she didn't see him teleport because she was looking at his resume. First of all, she wasn't looking at the resume through binoculars, there is something called peripheral vision. Second, going from standing to a few feet away, over a gate, and sitting down in less than a second would also give him away. Barry does this shit correctly in Batman v Superman, and despite that, he's still still caught disappearing for one frame. This is so much worse. Let's talk about the event that led to this happening, because it is a contrivance gold mine. The truck driver drops his burger and reaches for it, keeping his eyes off the road for 43 seconds. No, this is not fucking happening. You would have to actively resist the natural instinct to look up and give up on the burger until you've stopped. I guarantee you won't last more than 5 seconds with your head under the dash while driving towards a city intersection. Hey Southpaw, remind you of anyone? Iris's car is a piece of shit that takes forever to turn on and coincidentally does at a time where she and the truck driver can intersect. She sees the truck and slams the brakes, but apparently she was either flooring it or her brakes and tires are literally garbage, because the car skids forward several meters. The former is simply not true. It looks like she was driving 20 miles per hour at most. If the latter is true, then Fuck her for being so inconsiderate. This car is a fucking time bomb if it can't stop when going the school zone limit. Also, she coincidentally didn't wear her seatbelt, which is what allows her to fall out of the car. I guess she doesn't care about her own life either. So she hits the truck, going 20 miles per hour like I said, and it's somehow fast enough to propel the car upward and go tumbling. Why are you like this? Also, Iris doesn't seem to give one fuck about what's happening. She was ejected from her car and it fucking exploded, can you please have her act? She's reacting in this shot, but I guess she got bored of falling to her death. Everyone in the scene is a moron for the sake of the sequence. Dog shit continuity. Logistically and mechanically contrived as hell and absolute nonsense. And there's no defending it. Uh, is Barry Superman? Because possessing super speed doesn't let you fling a guy several meters forward, crashing him through doors and knock them out upon giving them a tiny push at normal speed. To achieve something like this, he'd have to, you know, actually use his super speed. This makes no sense and only tells me that Barry is the strongest man alive. In the stairwell scene, I mentioned he should be relocating these people instead of just running around. And now I retract that idea. But I'll still bring up the fact that it is astronomical levels of lucky that all this fucking lightning didn't barbecue anyone. It's only a two people wide staircase, he runs by everyone twice, there is so much lightning I'm about to get a headache, and no one was touched by the lightning. Right. Look, all I'm gonna say about this is that this is an extremely OP move. He has to be moving at an insane speed even for him to be able to move large chunks of debris in midair, make it to the ground, and change directions multiple times. This is too OP and might fuck with the stakes later on, we'll see.
Wait, what? What was the fucking point of that? If you didn't poke her sword into her hand, she would have just picked it up off the ground. Why didn't you help the person who was actually at risk of dying? Apparently, you can launch people with a tiny push. Why didn't you do this to Steppenwolf so he'd stop wailing on Batman? Wait, are you telling me Joss Whedon improved this scene by putting a parademon behind Diana so that pushing the sword into her hand had a reason? And then cut out this excess pounding to just have the Nightcrawler falling so that Barry wouldn't look stupider for choosing to help Diana? What the hell? You know we could do this in a nanosecond, right? We could. So, why don't you? You know... I could do this a lot faster, I just... Is it weird that it feels disrespectful? Hmm... He was my hero. Oh, okay. Are you gonna talk about right. it? Oh, never mind, they're just gonna dig now. This is all a defense system! It senses danger! Danger, no! Why didn't you push Victor off to the side before his missile launched instead of yelling at him like a moron? He's mostly metal, he can fucking take it. And you have all the time in the world to think about this. Victor, no! Victor, no! You could have prevented evil Superman. If Barry now knows Clark also has super speed, then why would he dash at him from the front where Clark can see him? This part was fine and fun though, so I'll give him that. Although, it does raise the question of why Clark doesn't use super speed when trying to kill the Justice League and only uses it with the Flash. Like, imagine if he just charged at each of them and snapped their necks in a second. Movie would have turned out pretty different, huh? Why is Cyborg the only one here? He could have at least taken Wonder Woman and Aquaman with him. The mother box. Where is it? Oh, how nice. I guess he just left her here. Oh cool, now they arrive, all at the same time too. Like imagine if Barry got his hands on the box, he could just run around the entire state with it and never let Steppenwolf catch up to him. Oh right, he could do that. After all, he is aware that these boxes need to be as far away from Edgy Wolf as possible, so let's see what's keeping him busy. So begins the end. Oh, he just stood there. Fan-fucking-tastic. I'm connected to the Unity! I need the charge to get inside! What the hell?! Eight seconds since he told you he was ready. Why the fuck didn't you go? So, this is a beloved and supposedly inspiring scene, and it's been criticized for actually being a hollow payoff. Rightfully so. Here are the two setups for it. Barry's dad tells him he's the best of the best, and to make his own future. Barry tells the team he avoids breaking his rule of running at the speed of light, because crazy things happen to time. He does not define what crazy means, that's literally it. And this is the payoff. Barry Barry tells himself he is indeed the best of the best, and to make his own future. Barry breaks his rule, but nothing crazy happens to time. He just goes back a couple seconds and saves the world at no expense to himself, nor proving anything. And keep in mind, this is the second time he broke his rule and nothing happened the first time either. I'm bringing this up because there are a couple defenses I've seen for this that are fucking idiotic. One is, there are consequences, we just don't know what they are yet. Well, that's kind of the problem, Einstein. The consequences either need to be defined by exposition or revealed by having Barry experience them in this movie to give a rat's ass about this moment. The other defense is, you obviously don't know what Flashpoint is. No, the casual viewer would not because it hasn't been mentioned in the DCEU. Now that we've reached the end, I want to take a little detour back to the beginning of this film. Does anyone else find it hilarious that Barry is struggling with money problems and yet 
his hideout is packing heat with 20 plus monitors, the fancy software running all this data, a fuckload of books, and his suit made of space shuttle material. Not to mention every pair of shoes he's had to steal whenever they explode. So if he's poor, unemployed, and has no one to fall back on, then we can infer that he stole this stuff, right? I get needing to steal for his suit so that his clothes don't burn up every time, but over 20 monitors? You are not telling me he needs 20 monitors. How the fuck is he even supposed to read the small text on the ones all the way up here? Ah, as I was looking for images for my thumbnail, I came across this one. Yes, these are indeed some nice ass monitors, and we can confirm he has at least two laptops. And something I forgot to think about was however many fucking computers are running these programs, because I can assure you it's not all coming from these two laptops. This isn't the hero you think he is. Lock him the fuck up along with these two. <laughs> Anyway, so if Barry has no qualms with stealing for his wants in addition to his needs, then why doesn't he steal for his own higher education? And shouldn't Bruce have figured out all this shit was stolen while he was waiting for him here? He identified the suit material after all, and he clearly sees Barry lives in a shithole. And if we go by third party media logic, Batman is the world's greatest detective. Isn't he like also against crime or something? <laughs> Maybe now would be an excellent time for Bruce to question Barry about his intentions and his moral code. Stop right there. I'm in. I need friends. Wait. Wait. And now some of you may be wondering what my response to a certain response video to my original video is. It was bad. The kid straight up misunderstood some of the criticisms, ignored some criticisms, and he even proved my point in two of his explanations. So if you're watching this, thank you for the good laugh. Let's go through them. By the way, since he mispronounced my name as Mavicate, let's call him Exanon. When I brought up how peripheral vision should have allowed the manager to see Barry teleport, Exanon said it shouldn't because he couldn't see his webcam and lighting setup when looking down at a piece of paper. According to him, these small objects, presumably out of field of view, are equivalent to a 5 foot 11 body standing 2 feet away from you. Why yes, I did just create a 3D simulation to prove some rando on the internet wrong. This is what my degree is being used for. What about it, huh? For some reason, he said Barry is allowed to take his time here because he can slow down everything around him, when my criticism was that he's being creepy with a stranger and it speaks poorly of his character. But I guess it isn't creepy when you're hot, right? Oh, fuck. Why are you gay? He said it was hypocritical of me to complain that Barry doesn't try to save anyone after pointing out that the lightning would hurt or kill people. When I brought that up, I had moved on from the lightning bit. I moved on to the next criticism, and treated the lightning as irrelevant to show that even if there was no lightning, there is still the issue of him not saving people. But it doesn't matter in the end, because we are leaving relocation off the table. In talking about the lightning, I said in my initial video that the CW always portrays it as small small streaks that only drag behind Barry. And he was like, Nuh uh, if you go to whatever these episodes these clips are from, there's lightning going around him. First of all, fine. The CW lightning was sometimes portrayed as small streaks that only dragged behind him. Second of all, these are still false equivalencies. It's really easy to tell if you just look. Snyder's lightning goes all over the place and it strikes the environment. You can literally see it creating sparks. Tell me, which one looks infinitely more dangerous? Exanon said it was fine that Barry went into the pooch pen because it was to show that he has initiative and to impress the manager with the hot dog which was something I also appreciated. But this intention doesn't negate the implications of what it took to get there. This is how tons of people end up saying a movie is good simply because it had nice themes or intentions. It's like if I said it doesn't matter if Bruce made it from the hole to Gotham with no resources because teleporting to Gotham means he can save it from the nuke. Exanon is saying it doesn't matter if Barry logistically gives himself away in front of the manager because it means he can impress her with his wiener.
Also, what the fuck? You're saying this like it's impossible to do the same thing without going into the pooch pen. If he returned to the same spot, he could pull out the sausage and just walk over to the dogs. When I questioned how Barry was able to launch the parademon really hard, I said he'd actually have to use super speed to pull this off, and showed a clip of Barry doing just that. And Exanon proceeded to prove my point by showing more clips of other speedsters running beforehand to accomplish something. Barry didn't knock out Colossus by standing in front of him and punching. Barry didn't jump across the chasm by standing on the edge of the bridge and then jumping. Thon didn't create clones of himself by just standing around. Barry didn't shoot a bolt of lightning by just standing around. Every clip he used shows a speedster actually using super speed beforehand to pull off a powerful move. Similarly, Barry should not have been able to blast this parademon as hard as he did by just standing behind it and pushing normally. That was my point. Thanks for proving it. Exanon says the movie doesn't have to tell you why Barry doesn't dig up the coffin with super speed because you can infer why he doesn't do it, so why have him say anything at all? We already know he could dig it up with super speed. He says it so casually too, like if none of this is a big deal. You know he could do this in a nanosecond, right? Look at his chill pose for crying out loud. And Cyborg concurs. We could. You're telling me the movie doesn't have to tell me something because I can figure it out on my own, but the movie is also telling me something I already know. It would be different if Cyborg asked him to use super speed while they're digging, and Barry remains silent with a frown. That would tell us how he feels about this. Does this look and sound like someone respecting or mourning their dead hero? Cross this one off the bucket list. Exhume Superman from the grave. Check. You know we could do this in a nanosecond, right? The Flash is all about the respect. Cross this one off the bucket list. And he's my hero. It's so random. Barry never brings up Superman in a personal way in any other scenes. Wouldn't he be curious about him when meeting Batman? No mention of him to his dad in that blatant exposition dump after having died recently? No interaction between him and Clark once it's all over? No consolation for trying to pulverize a huge fan and laser his head off? Nothing? Oh, I'm really really missing Superman right now. No, he only said that once he saw the enemy they were up against. It wasn't personal. Exanon accused me of maliciously removing footage that explains my criticism of why doesn't Barry immediately turn when he sees he's about to run into Aquaman, when he is fully capable of doing this. His answer was that Clark pushed Barry into Aquaman. First of all, I didn't maliciously remove shit. If I did not include additional footage, then I probably thought it was ridiculous redundant or was trying to avoid copyright. And maybe I didn't see this alleged push because not only is it difficult to tell if his hand is even touching him, but there's no continuity between these shots. That's his right arm here in front of Barry's ass. And then look, right arm is completely at his side, far away from Barry's ass in the next shot. I understood that Clark just dodged him and I'm willing to bet a lot of others did too. But Exanon conveniently did not answer my first question of why Barry would run at Clark from the front when he already Already knows Clark has super speed on par with his. Barry is off screen at the beginning of this moment, so it's not like he had no choice but to come at him from the front and give himself away. And coming from the front is what allows Clark to push him into Aquaman to begin with. Again, he has all the time in the world to think about this. Exanon said the consequence in the Superman resurrection scene was confused Superman himself because the time rewind caused Barry to touch the box at the wrong time, when it was inches above the liquid. So he's saying it was the timing of the touch that caused bad Superman, not time travel itself. He's admitting Superman would have been confused even if no time travel was involved, as long as he touched the box at the wrong time. And vice versa, he's admitting Superman would not have been confused even if he time traveled, as long as he touched the box at the correct time. So no, breaking the rules of the mother box powered resurrection has consequences, not these so-called undisclosed rules of time travel 
travel. You could say going light speed has the consequence of rewinding time, but the climax proves that it's entirely situational since it's purely a benefit in that scene. In fact, he needs to time travel because the world is ending, it's not like he was trying to avoid it like he was during the resurrection. That's what makes it a hollow payoff. We know he can choose to rewind any time he wants, whenever the world needs saving like this. And we have two instances showing us there are no side effects. If he rewound time to make it to his interview on time, it would also be purely beneficial. Funnily enough, Exanon admitted to there being no consequences in the climax, but we have to wait to find out what they'll be, and conveniently ignored and removed the segment of me explaining that waiting for a future film to reveal this is not a defense. And even if it was, the Snyder Cut is not canon to the upcoming DCEU films including The Flash, so it will never be revealed. You know, leaving out my disclaimer to make his defense sound reasonable to his audience is pretty malicious. You really think you did something and thought we wouldn't notice, huh? At least the alleged Superman push wasn't clear because of wonky visuals and no continuity. You straight up cut out an entire disclaimer I spelled out for you, punk. Exanon brought up how in the climax I fucked up understanding that going light speed instantly gives Barry the electrical charge he needs, but ignored how I pointed out that Barry had 8 seconds to run to Cyborg with the charge before he got shot by the Parademon, which is what allowed the time travel moment to happen in the first place. I had this ending where I invited Warner Bros and the CW to hire me to help them with their super speed consistency and said I'd take minimum wage and called the position speedometer. Let's see how Exanon reacted to it. You need me, DC. You need me. I'm like, that's cool, but you're living in a fucking dream world, okay? <laughs> I'm like, wake the fuck up! Oh, no. He took my ending seriously. Oh no, why? Hire me as your speedometer. How did you think this was serious? I'm like, that's cool. But you're living in a fucking dream world, okay? <laughs> I'm like, wake the fuck up! Ah, man. That's such a good clip, Exanon. You really got me good. But I wonder if there's a different scenario that this clip applies to best. I'm like, that's cool, but you're living in a fucking dream world, okay? I'm like, wake the fuck up! And that'll do it for this video, folks. This was a long time coming, and I'm glad I decided to amend the initial video thanks to valid criticism a handful of viewers provided. I'm aware my other videos might have an error here and there, but this one was to a degree I could not be proud of. More vids to come, and I have a Twitter by the way. Come follow me so we can ratio dumb people together. And a big ol' shout out to Rat Taxes for becoming my first patron before I even announce the Patreon in my next video this weekend. Which, sorry in advance, but you won't be in the credits on that one because the sponsor already approved the video. Hope this shout out makes up for it. Okay, bye.